Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering the basics of DNA and RNA, things like DNA replication, transcription, and translation. This is the first of seven videos in my genetics section, so I suggest you check out the rest of these when you're done with this one. We will start with the central dogma of molecular biology, which is the underlying principle of how we get from DNA to protein that actually affects the body, that makes up most of the dry mass of the human body. DNA is going to be acted on by DNA polymerase to give us replication, so you're basically just doubling the DNA so you can go into mitosis, meiosis, whatever. DNA is gonna be converted to RNA, which is immature, through the process of transcription via RNA polymerase. The immature RNA is going to be processed by having things like a five prime cap, poly A tail put on it, as well as having the introns spliced out and the exons joined together to give you mature RNA. And finally, that RNA is going to be acted on by the ribosomal RNA, or just the ribosome, and the tRNA via the process of translation, which turns the RNA into protein. As I mentioned, DNA replication is just making two identical copies of the DNA from one original cell. It's semi-conservative, which means of the two original strands in the original single cell, the two daughter cells that result from it, each one is going to have one of those original strands. So each daughter cell has one old strand and one new strand. DNA replication goes in a five prime to three prime direction. DNA polymerase is the enzyme responsible for DNA replication. It's the one that moves in the five prime to three prime direction, making new DNA from the template strand. In prokaryotes, DNA polymerase one mainly handles proofreading and the replacement of RNA primers, while DNA polymerase three synthesizes most of the new DNA. That's not all that important for step one, but you should know that DNA polymerase makes DNA and also has some exonuclease proofreading abilities that go backwards, uh, three to five prime, looking for mistakes in DNA replication. Topoisomerase is the enzyme that creates single strand breaks in the phosphodiester bonds within DNA to allow free rotation of the DNA and relieve supercoiling that is created by replication or transcription. So as the enzymes and replication machinery are working on DNA, it's opening up origins of replication and that change in the shape can create supercoiling, sort of like how a telephone cord from an old school telephone would get all wrapped up. Topoisomerase relieves this strain, so DNA replication can continue without having any problems. Bacterial topoisomerase is the target for the antibiotic fluoroquinolone or Cipro, and an autoantibody targeted at the person's own topoisomerase is common in scleroderma. Transcription is converting the template DNA strand into coding RNA. The RNA is going to be complementary to the DNA, only real difference is it's going to be single-stranded most of the time rather than double-stranded, and it's going to have the U-nucleotide substituted in for the T-nucleotides. In eukaryotes, RNA polymerase 1 makes ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, 2 makes messenger RNA, or mRNA, and 3 makes tRNA. But again, that's not really that important for step 1. Post-translational modifications, or just RNA processing, is the process of converting immature RNA into mature RNA. You're going to have a five prime cap of a modified guanine added to the end of the RNA to help ribosomes recognize the RNA. You're also going to have a poly A tail added to the three prime end. It's a sequence of AAUAAA that is added without following any complementary DNA sequence. And this extra tail that's added onto the RNA helps prevent degradation of the RNA. The spliceosome is going to remove introns and join the remaining exons. This splicing process can be carried out in multiple different ways. So you can reorganize the order of exons, keep some introns, get rid of some exons, 
in a whole bunch of different fashions, which can give you multiple different gene products from a single gene. And lastly, translation is the process by which RNA sequences or mRNA is converted into a set of amino acids to become protein. Each amino acid is coded for by a three nucleotide sequence called a codon. The tRNA, which carries the amino acid, has a complementary anticodon, which recognizes the codon. The mRNA is read in a five prime to three prime direction. And translation begins at the start codon, AUG, and ends at a stop codon. So that's really all I have for some of this basic DNA, RNA stuff. Most of it's really not that high yield for step one. And here are a list of other related topics, which are also not all that high yield for step one. That's why I just sort of threw it all into one video and cut out a lot of this stuff, which I didn't really think was worth covering. If you do want to study this stuff more in depth, there's plenty of other resources out there for that. I would just suggest you not spend much time on this subject before you've mastered all the higher yield material. That brings us to the end of this video. Please give me some feedback by commenting at the bottom of the page. Those of you that are familiar with my video series know that I currently only have videos that cover about a quarter of the total material on step one. Before I dedicate a bunch more money and time to finishing the project, I want to make sure you all actually find it useful. You could say stop on step one is currently in the proof of concept phase. So please let me know if you love it, hate it, or have suggestions for how to improve it.